We have been discussing the controversy regarding the year Jerusalem was destroyed. On one hand, we have a broad consensus of Bible scholars and theologians, historians and archaeologists, and many others, who say that Jerusalem was destroyed in 587 or 586 B.C. On the other hand, there are some who say that it was 607 B.C. Of course, numbers do not matter. Evidence does. Can the Bible help us determine which date is a better fit for the destruction of Jerusalem? It certainly can. Let us go back to the year 520 BC, some 19 years after the fall of Babylon. Many Jews have returned from exile and have re-established themselves in the land. The foundation of the temple has been laid. However, the temple has not yet been completed. God rouses two prophets, Haggai and Zechariah, to spur the people into action. Examining the words of these prophets will help us determine which year better matches the year of Jerusalem's destruction. Haggai 2.3 says, Who among you is left that saw this house in its former glory? And how do you see it now? Does it seem like nothing to you? If the temple was destroyed in 607 BC, how old would Haggai's audience have to be that they would remember the temple in its former glory? If we take the year 520 BC and subtract 607, we derive 87 years. Plus, we would need to add a few more years, because a person would need to be old enough to remember the temple in its glory days. A person would have to be well into their 90s. However, if Jerusalem was destroyed in 587, this would be a matter of 67 years. And in this case, Haggai would be speaking to people in their 70s. Which is more plausible, that he was speaking to an audience of 90-somethings who remembered the temple's destruction in 607, or to an audience of 70-somethings who witnessed the temple's destruction in 587 or 586 B.C.? Well, let's leave that question open and go to the book of Zechariah. In chapter 1, verse 7, we find that it is the 24th day of the 11th month in the second year of Darius, that is to say, February of 519 B.C. In verse 12, we find an angel asking a very interesting question in regard to the state of Jerusalem. The angel of Yahweh answered and said, O Yahweh of hosts, how long will you have no compassion on Jerusalem and the cities of Judah, with which you showed fury these seventy years? Here we find mention of another period of seventy years, not the seventy years of Jeremiah, which was for Babylon, but what we will call the seventy years of Zechariah. Here we find the angel asking in the year 519 B.C. how long God would not show compassion for Jerusalem and the cities of Judah, whom by the state of the land has been adjudged subject to God's fury for the past 70 years. Later in this passage, God says that he had returned and the temple would be rebuilt and Judah would be prosperous. But the point of this is to focus on these 70 years of Zechariah. If God's fury had been on Jerusalem for 70 years up to this point, when did this fury begin? If we take February of 519 BC and subtract 70 years, what year do we come to? We come to the year 589 BC. According to conventional chronology, this was the year that Zedekiah rebelled against Nebuchadnezzar, the king God commanded him to obey, lest Judah incur God's wrath and destruction. Not too long thereafter, Nebuchadnezzar's armies began an 18th month siege of Jerusalem, lasting until the summer of 587 BC. Certainly we could say that around 589 BC onward, about the time that Zedekiah rebelled, Judah had incurred the wrath of God. In Zechariah 7.1, we find that it is the fourth year of King Darius, on the fourth day of the ninth month, that is, December of 518 B.C. In verses 3 through 5, we find that the Jews had commemorated a time of fasting for these many years, in the fifth month, likely because Jerusalem fell in the fifth month. They asked whether they should continue to fast, as they had been doing. In verse 5, God tells them, Say to all the people of the land and to the priest, When you fasted and lamented in the fifth month and seventh month for these seventy years, did you really fast for me? 
To calculate the period that the Jews had been fasting, let's take the year 518 BC and subtract 70 years. And we come to the year 588 BC, which will land us in the middle of the siege of Jerusalem, about six or seven months before its fall. The 70 years of Zechariah would appear to be an approximation. After the fall of Jerusalem in 587 BC until 520 BC, the Jews had been fasting for about 67 years, or roughly 70 years. Zechariah is not so concerned with an exact figure than making a point about their fasting. So we have to ask, based on Zechariah, which is the better fit, 607 BC or 587 BC? Did the work of Haggai in Zechariah see results? Indeed it did. Let's take a look at Ezra chapter 6 verses 14 and 15. So the elders of the Jews were building and prospering through the prophecy of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. They finished building by the command of the God of Israel and by the decree of Cyrus, Darius, and King Artaxerxes of Persia. This house was completed on the third day of the month of Adar, which was in the sixth year of the reign of King Darius. In March of 515 BC, the temple was rebuilt, roughly 70 years after conventional chronology tells us it was destroyed. Indeed, some hold to the interpretation that this period of seven years, about 586 BC to 516 BC, was the 70 years of Jeremiah. Indeed, that is the viewpoint of Rainier Alberts, author of the book Israel in Exile. However, as we've determined from our exegesis on Jeremiah, this is not the most viable interpretation. There appear to be two periods of 70 years. The 70 years found in Jeremiah, focused on Babylonian rule, and the 70 years of Zechariah, which was focused on the state of the temple in Jerusalem. It is clear from reading the books of Haggai and Zechariah that 587 BC is the better fit for the destruction of Jerusalem rather than 607 BC. However, the Bible contains more specific data than the approximations we've considered here. According to Jeremiah, Jerusalem was destroyed in Nebuchadnezzar's 18th regnal year. If we can determine Nebuchadnezzar's 18th regnal year, we can calculate the year of Jerusalem's destruction.